Hello, everyone, and uh, <clears throat> welcome to another reading best question, which is known as a, a para summary best question. So, we are jumping into this particular important type of uh, verbal ability question for the CAT exam, which is known as a para summary question, isn't it? Para summary. Now, this question type is uh, essential because it also tests your ability to. Uh, comprehend um, the passes or any passes uh, and identify its uh, most accurate and uh, concise summary. Um, so let's go over how to approach this question strategically. So first thing is called as understand the passes. Understand the, understand the passes. Understand the passes. So in a para summary question, you will be given a nothing but a short passage, and uh, one one's job is to read and understand its uh, you can say that central idea, central idea, isn't it? The key here is not to get lost into the details, but uh, focus on the main point. Focus on the main point, right? Or you can say that what the core argument, the core argument so argument of the passes uh, so you can ask yourself what is the author trying to uh, convey or uh, means present in the fewest words possible then after this you can analyze each and every option which is uh, given below that so uh, what you will do you will uh, then the presented with the four different summaries and one of them will be the most logically a logical and accurate representation of the of the passes isn't it so um however remember that some options may look uh, tempting but uh, subtly distort distort means called as a, uh, you can say that uh, distorting the main idea the meaning of the passes too others may focus uh, you can say too much on specific details too much on specific details, which is not the goal of a good summary, right? So the uh, main thing is called as you need to know about how to eliminate wrong choices. Let's say that if you talk about uh, these four uh, options are given, option A, option B, option C, and option D. So you can say option A might be including, uh, you can say unnecessary, unnecessary details, unnecessary details that were present in the passage but are not essential to its main idea, right? Not essential to main idea. Option B could be, uh, uh, you can say that misinterpret, misinterpret the tone, misinterpret the tone. Um, you can say that, uh, or you can say uh, exaggerating a point, taking the author's argument, uh, you can also say out of context. Right. So similar to that option C could be uh, known as a concise, but might leave out the core argument, core argument might be leave out the core argument entirely. And if you talk about D, uh, that could capture the essence of the passage in a precise and natural manner. So in that case, um, this could be likely your correct answer, isn't it? Now, in that case, uh, you can say um, after even drawing your answer, that called as a, the first one unnecessary detail, second one misinterpret, third one is concise, but leave a, leaving out the core argument, and you find out fourth is your correct answer. But cross check with your with the passes. Once you have uh, shortlisted your options, always go back to the passes, right? Always go back to your passes and match the potential summary with the original test. Ask yourself, does the summary encapsulate the whole idea without any, uh, you can say, distort, distortion or you can say omission, right or not? So uh, then only you can find out the 100% accuracy that, yes, this is my uh, correct answer, isn't it? Let's take this test and... Uh, uh, identify that uh, how we can reach to the correct answer by doing elimination, 
by reading the passage thoroughly and understanding the main idea or uh, core idea. And we'll also check that how um, certain uh, choices can be considered as a distorting the main idea and identifying the main idea. So let's go to this particular passage. In the passage, it is stated, the passage given below is a followed by the, uh, so here is the direction. The direction said the passage given below is followed by four alternate summaries. We need to choose the option that best captures the essence of the passage, right? So let's read the passage. It is stated the negative effects of declining deposit growth can extend beyond the banking sector and spill over into the broader economy. As banks' liquidity risk increases, their ability or willingness to fund loan growth can decrease. As a result, at a time when banks are becoming more sensitive to credit risk and tightening underwriting standards and loan terms, deposit erosion can further impair the ability of, of some borrowers to obtain funds or can increase their cost of funding. As some borrowers have few alternatives to bank financing, constraints on banks' ability to fund profitable investment can adversely affect economic activity. Isn't it? So as we understood the text, let's uh, look at the options and try to identify which option carries the means, uh, main idea or the core idea of the text and which of the option that uh, distorting. So through the elimination process, right? Elimination process or comparing or contrasting the choices. Let's look at the first one. The first one said declining deposit growth primarily, right? Uh, affects bank liquidity, causing them to tighten loan terms, which in turn, uh, turn impacts borrowers' access to funds and cost. Now, this one focuses on the what? Uh, focuses on direct effects, isn't it? Direct effects on banks, right, and borrowers, but doesn't fully capture the broader, broader economic economic uh, impact that described impact described in the passage isn't it so hence we can say option one cannot fulfill the summary second one erosion of deposits leads to increased bank liquidity risk and makes banks more cautious about lending thereby raising cost for borrowers now this option does what highlights highlights the impact on bank liquidity, isn't it? Bank liquidity. And also, you can say that a borrowing cost, isn't it? Borrowing cost, but misses the broader implication for the economy. Right or not? So, in that case, you can say uh, the Im implication of the economy is also needed. Right? The broader implication for the economy, which is also needed. So, which is missing in option two. So in that case, you can say option two also cannot be called as a sum complete summary. Option three stated, declining deposit growth impacts the broader economy by reducing banks' lending ability and increasing borrower's cost, which affect the economic activity. Now, option three, look into it. What does it say? Declining deposit growth impacts the broader economy by reducing banks' lending ability and increasing borrowed cost which affects economic activity so you can say that uh, this summary effectively captured the essence of the passage by addressing both the uh, you can say that uh, both the effect both the effects right on bank effects on whom bank and the borrowers borrowers and the broader economic impact isn't it? Broader economic impact affects economic activity. So in that case, you can say this is the perfect summary which cover everything. Isn't it? So, but let's look at the option four before we consider option three is the final answer. So four said deposit erosion results in banks reducing their lending and increasing cost for borrowers, which adversely impact economic activity and limits borrower, borrowers funding option. Now, if I look into this particular option, this uh, option summarizes the what? This option summarizes, uh, you can say that the impact, 
impact on banks and uh, impacts on banks and the borrowers and uh, mentioned the adverse effect isn't it so it is stated about what advert uh, uh, adverse effects on economic activity but is a less precise you can say that or you can say it is a wadi one precise about how these factors interrelate so in that case we consider four is also not the appropriate summary or you can say four is not as good as option 3 right so in that case option 3 is the good one or the be better one or you can say the best of all so option 3 is the best summary as it comprehensively reflects how declining um deposit growth affects banks lending ability borrower cost and the broader economy right economic activity it accurately captures the, uh, you can say that, uh, essence, essence of the passes, including the interplay between these factors and their impact on economic activity. So we consider the correct answer is option three. I hope you understood this. <clears throat> okay. So that's what you can find out here. I hope you understood this. That's all. Thank you.